Welcome, afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining in in this exploration with me on on ICF Competency Three, which is maintain, establish, establishing and maintain agreements. So we're going to talk about agreements. Basically, I believe this competency is the foundation for effective coaching. So we're going to delve into how we as coaches can partner with clients to craft powerful agreements for each session. Again, this is an exploration. Uh, I'm not an expert. We all are experts. We all learning. And this is just my view of how I see the this competency. And then we're going to explore together. Before we start, I'm going to ask... What happens when you have a clear agreement or a contract? Imagine you have a successful coaching session. What contribute to the success? What happens when you have clear agreements or contracts? If you can put it in the chat or you can come out of mute and, and say what you want to say. What happens when you have clear agreements? It's not even in coaching session, probably just like a normal life. You know, you, we do a lot of things in normal life. Okay. Keshav saying clear boundaries. I hope you can see the comments, right? Which I'm sharing now on the screen. Okay, I think everyone involved knows what the outcome needs to be. Yeah. Clarity brings clear outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. Minimize, eliminate surprises. Yep. Clear communication. Ah, expect expectations are set. Yeah, some wonderful comments. Now I'm going to ask, what happens when something is not clear about agreement contract? What happens then when not clear about agreement? Hmm. Conflict, yeah. Confusion, doubt, miscommunications, yeah. Frustrations, breakdown, indeed. Lack of decision making. See, a lot of things can have an impact on this, right? When agreement is not clear. One of the, what I explored, what I observed is lack of trust as well, you know? So if there's no agreement, there's some time there is lack of trust. And not in coaching sessions, but in generally as well. So you always in the, in the, in the dilemma of what, what could happen, you know, what I'm doing where I'm going. So basically agreements act as a roadmap, guiding clients towards their desired outcomes. They establish expectations for both coach and client, like we discussed. Clear agreements foster a sense of trust and accountability. And they contribute to a more focused and productive coaching session. This is why I do believe agreements are the cornerstone of, of a session of sessions. It could be the right. Sometimes the agreements could be for longer session, not even one session, but how we break it down to each session. So if you see here, Einstein said, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I'll spend 55 minutes to thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about say, solutions. So what and why is very, very important. Sometimes, in my experience on, on my coaching sessions, I observed and 
I got the feedback as well from my mentors. So I spent less time on agreement and straight away go into solutionizing mode, you know, trying to help the client, trying to, okay, I've got something, I'm going to just carry on and follow the process. But we never go deeper into what the actual real problem is. What is the actual the root cause is? What is the actual problem they're here, uh, they're here for to solve? We always jump ahead and say, okay, I've got the question I've asked. What is the topic you want to discuss? And uh, that's it. We never go deeper into it. Because in, again, I can only say from my own experience and what I've done is I just say, okay, I need to finish this coaching session. I need to have an outcome at the end of the coaching session. But if I spend 55 minutes out of an hour session on finding out the word and the why, and some of the sessions I've realized, the solution is very easy because they are clear. Like we, you guys mentioned, the clarity, you know. If there is a clarity, then solution is easy. You know what to do. Even we, when we go with teams as well, right? the teams are trying to solve a problem. And the most time we spend within the team coaching is, again, on what are we trying to solve? Why? The purpose, the why. Why is there? And how will we measure it? How will we know that we have achieved what we wanted to achieve? And the solutions are quite easy then. I want to quote Michelangelo's quotation here as well. Every block of the stone has a statue inside. And it is the lack of the sculpture to discover. It's the task of a sculpture to discover it. So he does. He just say, I just take out what is not needed. So this is what we are, you know, when we come into coaching sessions. We are that stone. And as a coach, as a sculptor, we are here to discover it. We are here to take out what is not needed. A coach can, or client can say a lot of things, you know, they want to discuss, a lot of things they want to do, a lot of things they want to do. Is there like a, like a stone without, without a statue? So we need to carve that statue out in coaching sessions. So this resonated with me a lot, this, uh, this quote, when I heard about it or when I read about it, and then I said, yeah, this is what our role is as well, right? We need to take out what is, the, what is not needed. Simplicity is the key here. And something I want to share from Frozen 2, I don't know if anyone have you watched Frozen 2. Um, uh, in there, this, there's a song, right? Take a step, step again. It's all that I can do is to do the next right thing. So this is where the client coach is, a, a client is when they come into it, right? They have so many things. But what they can do is they can only do the next right thing. And this is where our job is to find the next right thing. By getting a clarity, by getting the focused, finding time on agreements is what is needed for the client to do the next right thing. Because when you don't know, you don't know, right? We just don't know what we need to do. So what's coming up for you here? I would like us to, uh, if you guys can come uh, unmute yourself and please share your thoughts. What's coming up for you here? So Rohit, the one thing that I'm thinking is, why is the don't with embraces what does that imply after seeing this? Yeah. Good question. <laughs> Even I don't know. <laughs> I just put it in the brackets. When you don't know, don't means you just don't know. Sometimes yeah. we don't, we don't probably say, I don't know, right? Yeah. We just keep thinking, oh, if I say I don't know, what will happen? Yes. It's the fear of judgment, I think. Um, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, fear of judgment. What will someone say? Yeah. yeah. Anyone else?
I mean, I get a sense of being lost, to be very frank. Mm-hmm. When I feel, when I don't know, that I don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I think inquisitiveness then kicks in because I think there is an awareness that I don't know. And then there's a quest to know what I don't know. So it's a very uncomfortable feeling, actually, uh, not knowing something. And that can be bothering mm. yeah. but if that awareness sets in then you kind of move towards understanding yes. what you don't know yeah yeah see this is where the coaches come in right they are when they come in they have a lot of things in their mind and this is where why coaching by having this that coaching conversations can help them become more aware because they probably like i said in if you see that uh, metaphor for michelangelo's statue they they come in as a full stone right we need they need to carve out take the things they take out the things we don't need and just focus on the things we need and then when they come in they don't know what they want to do that's why they come to us that's why they come for for help and this is why the agreement at the start is very very important to get the clarity what they want to achieve in this session or the sessions ahead or the actual overall goal of the of the assignment of the engagement because as a why i put this quotation here is that when somebody comes in to us right or if i go to say i don't know what i want to do right and i need help i need a thinking partner so this is why i pushed put it here and you agree, you are right that uh, it's very uncomfortable position but then again we need to find out why there is uncomfortable position here there might be something inside that making us uncomfortable or the root cause is something else so my interpretation of uh, this uh, statement is a uh, two folds one is uh, you know what you don't know Mm-hmm. as a coach and mm. you don't know what you don't know so i think there are two scenarios to it which mm-hmm. at least for me the interpretation is as a coach there are two scenarios because coach is also conscious to some degree in terms of what he or she knows that they don't know so it's about consciousness and the subconscious part of it so that's how i i interpreted this uh, these yeah. six words yeah see we are so complex right we all interpret we by own our own means we all are different and imagine when coachy comes in it could be a lot of things going on in the head a lot of things so this is where i want to share this uh this is a knevin framework basically uh, it's about the complexity you know the all the domains we have uh, i don't know if ramya you probably be aware of this because we use in in this uh, agile world here or anyone else i don't know if they are aware of this framework so there are a lot of things which are complex where everything is emerging and then there is a domain called complicated and then obvious which is more of a clear where the best best practice happens and then the chaotic where the novel things happen why i'm sharing this here is that you know when a client or coach comes in they could be in a chaotic position domain or they could be in complex domain that's why i mentioned when you don't know you don't know and just my interpretation you know they might be in a chaotic or complex situation that they don't know what they don't know and how as coaches we move them into more towards complicated or clear position right what they need to do what the next right thing they need to do because in complex environment everything is basically entangled with everything else 
and the only thing you know with certainty is that there are unintended consequences and everything will emerge from it in the complex environment and nothing is linear there's no causality in a complex environment because you don't know what's happening everything is entangled and we need to take out we do a lot of experiments that's why coaches come up with a lot of options what they can do or what they want to achieve but what they can do the next right thing is that the agreement right this is where we need to focus more time on agreements than jumping ahead and doing that other things again this is my my experience my observation we tend to go right in the right at the start ask one question and move on to the do the next thing okay i need to do uh, you know find the solutions now i need to find out what happens and then i need to you know to um, what's in client's growth here you know everything is in client's growth in my view you know to to get the clarity for them is client's growth they they came in as position a they moved to position b with more clarity and that is a growth because they come in with a lot of complexity and chaos chaotic nature sometimes a lot of things are happening they have a lot of information the prefrontal cortex is quite busy with the information we need to get the clarity that is why clarity is important so every successful journey starts with a clear destination right and in coaching this translate to identifying the client's desired outcome for the session and our role as coaches is to guide clients in uncovering this by asking the questions right then encourage them to articulate their goals articulate their goals we can rephrase or we can ask the follow up questions to you know, get a clear understanding of the client's desired outcomes for the session the more clarity they have easy they there is easy solution then in the end because they have the clarity they're moving out of that complex domain to more of a complicated or a clear domain where they have more clarity Yeah, you can see the example metaphor here of a still water, right? You can sometimes clean water, still water. You can see things underneath, beneath that. It's quite rainy. It's quite muddy. It's quite you know. Then you can't see it. You need to clear it. So how does clarity resonating with you all? if i may rohit um, yes please yeah when i see this picture and the clarity um i remember going uh, canoeing in one of the rivers in the us which was completely black the laver river completely black and in all circumstances or, or the entire time i was doing that i was afraid something is going to pop up that that i am not foreseeing you know so it is so clarity is brings confidence is something that comes to my mind uh when i see it clarity brings um what do i say uh enables us to think clear and decide take the step forward with confidence without clarity i feel that is something lacking so when i see this that was the first thought that came to my mind i thought i can share mm -hmm. thank you and how you can re resonate this with uh, link here with agreements with agreements when i see um so i usually do that in my 
coaching as well um, if they are not clear i again ask them for for analogies for metaphors um because when they do that there is clarity for me as well as for them uh i also get to know how they are looking at the situation at this point um so i've tried doing that and it has helped me um in certain situations so uh, in terms of agreement i feel it is um it makes things more tightly bound brings in lot of boundaries in the picture uh and the coachy when they have clarity they are uh it leads to more accountability even at the end uh is what i've seen uh for them to commit to something because now they are clear with uh the vision how they foresee thank you let me say agreement can be the first step of gaining clarity in a coaching session yeah Rama, you wanna explore this? Um, well, Rohit, I believe a right agreement. When we clarify with the client, they start to get clarity from that point itself. So when we are reflecting them back what they said, I have seen that in you know as a coach and as a coach you also I have seen that when the agreement is clear, they start to get clarity on what is that they want to focus at that point. On. it starts to evolve from there yeah it starts to evolve from there we start seeing the statue right we start seeing that statue that is why it's very important it's it's is that the thing which actually binds the whole whole session the center stage that that the the being the in between we can call it uh, we can call it sun in the solar system where everything rolls around it right is that middle bit agreement the clarity thank you thank you so identifying client's destination i want to share what we can do to obviously link it to the pcc markers uh, regarding this competency identifying client's destination we we discussed a little bit here that every journey needs a goal right our role is to guide clients in uncovering their desired outcome for the session and obviously the techniques we can use uh, active listening reflecting summarizing and clarifying questions and you will see this slide and techniques is everywhere what i've talk because this is what this is the glue right this is the adhesive basically which keeps that clarity keeps that um you know the focus around it and sometime we have to reagreement recontract within that within the session because client or coach has find something that they want there's more important for them to discuss this is why this is this is emerging this is why i shared that complex that as a complex complex human beings everything is emerging and it could happen within a session that we have to recontract something emerged for us to get more clarity on something related to their values that we need some clarity on something related to their purpose maybe we need some clarity on or they need some clarity on us that we need clarity on together and then we probably have to do recontract again so this is why active listening reflecting summarizing and clarifying questions are the glue for all the pcc markers especially in this one because we don't want to miss out something they say and i have been uh, obviously my uh, i may you probably know in our uh, in our mentoring sessions my feedback was i need to work a lot on 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 finding the contract you know don't jump ship just stay there stay focused keep asking those clarifying questions
Anyone want to share something on this? Anything coming up? I think I will uh, probably combine this techniques all along with clarity that you, as, as you have done so beautifully in the flow, which is that once you have <clears throat> a clear agreement, then you can focus your listening on the agreement and then move forward. Um, and by that, what I mean is that if I know this is the goal that needs to be achieved as a coach, if I know that this is the goal that needs to be achieved, then by using active listening, I can make sure that words, gestures, actions, or context that relates to that goal can be sort of highlighted if the person's not seeing it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we need to kind of rephrase as well that is this what they want yeah. to discuss? Is, the, is this what they want to actually discuss? The, is this what their goal is, basically? Yeah. Rather than, um, you know, because sometimes we notice, right, that sometimes they say something, but the actual goal is something else, right? So, Correct. Yeah, so this is why I think we can rephrase that, reflecting, summarizing as well to see, is this what I'm hearing, right? Or there is something else beneath that. Thank you, Neha. Thank you. Okay. Very. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, the next thing is defining success. Reaching the destination is important. We all know that, right? But how will we know we have gotten there? This is where the Defining clear measure of success comes in. We partner with the clients to establish specific criteria that will indicate that they have achieved their desired outcome. And these measures of success can be tangible, such as completing a specific task or maybe more emotional, right? Such as the feeling empowered or motivated. You know, the key is to ensure they are clear, measurable, and relevant to the client's goal for the session. If I don't know, as a coachee, if I don't know where what my measure of success is, how would I know I have got there? Right. And this doesn't mean is in real life as well, right? We say, okay, I'm gonna go there. What's the measure of success? How will I know I have reached there? So having the clarity of the su defining success for the coachee is very important here as well. It's all part of establishing and maintaining agreements. We know the what they want to do and the defining the success. Because at the end of the session, we can ask, okay, this is what you wanted to do, and these were the major success where we are. Or are we going in the right direction? Because sometimes they can wave off, right? They can wave off and do something different, talk something different. We need to bring them back and say, hey, here is our goal we started with. Where are we with this? How far are we with from the goal? This is why I shared that I want to say that this is why I shared that uh, the domain again, the complex and complicated or chaos, they can move into any domain within that, that coaching session. So it's our role as, as a coach by, again, same techniques, active listening, summarizing, asking questions to bring them back into the path towards the goal, towards their destination. And then we need to find out if we are doing the right thing or not. Are we going, is, 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 what's the success? Is, are we reaching the success or not? It's like objective and key results, right? We have objectives, but how we will know we reach that. So we need to define some key results here. Defining success. Any experience you could share from your own uh, sessions, which you can share with the audience here, anyone? 
especially regarding defining success? How did it help? I think measures of success, I can, I, I have a, not a positive uh, experience to share, but me, defining the measure of success is something that I have always received feedback on from my mentors to say that that's something that I need to work on. And, uh, you know, uh, as you are explaining it in this flow, it makes so much sense that if you know, how will you know once you get there, that's also, that also needs to be a critical part of the agreement right in the beginning. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Neha. Thanks for being vulnerable here. But yeah, thanks for sharing. Very, very important. Even, even in, even in, if you say talk about business sense as well, right? We, we have a why the business is there, why the purpose is there, why the team is built, right? The purpose. And the agreement is this is what we want to do, but how we will know. This is why it's very, very important for a coachee as well as a single and as complex as humans that we need to find out. It's all about carving that statue, basically. Okay, I've done what, uh, I found the goal now, and I, do, I need to now carve out the success, defining success. And wherever we are in our journey as a coach, we always keep learning. So thanks for sharing that, Neha. And same techniques, I, I'd say, active listening, summarizing, and uh, clarifying questions. Any other technique would you think would be really, really good here? And especially in defining success, what other technique do you think would be really good to use here? I think visualization put, helps. Um, yeah, brilliant. Simply yeah. in the sense yeah. that, um, yeah. what would it look like? What does your life look like once you have achieved this goal? That's that's been really beneficial. Um, the few times that I have used it well, so visualization definitely helps. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Neha. Thanks. Totally agree. Totally agree. And this is again. I probably link the visualization to the clarity, right? Putting something into visual form helps bring the clarity. What I was in the head, we bring it forward. We bring it in front of, we're kind of reflecting that in front of them. So that brings clarity as well in my point of view. So which helps in there. Thank you. And the most important part is uncovering the why in my um, observations. Goals are important, but the why behind them fuels motivation. In coaching sessions, we explore the why by asking questions that delve deeper into the client's purpose and cover what truly matters to them. So we're moving from the what and and the and this is the why. Why I'm doing what I'm doing? Why this goal is important for me today? What is the real purpose of this goal? Yeah. And then understanding the why helps the client connect with their intrinsic motivations as well. Yeah. And probably fosters a stronger sense of ownership over their coaching journey because why I'm here, why this goal is important for me. Nothing is extrinsic anymore. It's all by intrinsic, you know. It could be because my value is in play here, or could be that there is a need, or could be something else. So this is where we can dig deeper into it and start uncovering the why. And again, a bit more statue comes out, right? carving out the statue. Why I'm doing what I'm doing.
again, same techniques, I believe. Uh, in my experience, I can't find any other techniques than because if you see uh, the other competencies, they're all part of this, right? This is what I said, the agreement one, in my view, is in the center and everything revolves around it. And then probably another competency can have the center as well, and everything revolves around it. This is why the beauty of these competencies are, right? Everything revol revolves around it. So we are in in this full competency mode in all the competencies, right? We're still active listening. We're still listening. You know, we, we are basically fostering clients' growth and finding out their why. Why are we doing this? Why this call is important for me? And that's where we can dig deeper into their values. And say, so a question like, what will achieving this goal allow you to do in your life? Rather than asking, oh, why this is important, we can be more creative in asking questions. So any stories you could share when you, not in agreement, not in coaching session, but when you knew your why and it made it more clear for you, any stories you could share from your personal life or any coaching sessions, or being a coachee especially, yeah. I can share one experience, um, Rohit. Yes, please. Yeah. So, sharing a little bit of vulnerability here because someone gave me a feedback um, mm -hmm. that I am a feminist, and hence I started exploring that with one of the coaches. Um, and it was the why that gave me a lot of clarity for that perception. Um, and then I realized the importance of that why, uh, because uh, while exploring, I realized uh, any other question until then didn't matter much because I was trying to explore uh, that particular perception. And when I reached the why stage, why that perception was built, the, the clarity was at a different level uh, from my experience. So I think, uh, and and that stage we reached probably very close to the end of the conversation. And after that, I think it was almost as if we did not need to have further conversation, you know? So, um, so I think the why aspect as a coachy is what I would like to share uh, my personal experience there. Thank you. Thank you, Ramya. And the last one is, what is the next right thing? Because we have the goal, we know the why, we know the measure of success. Okay, now, what is the next right thing? They got to do to accomplish their goal in this session. So especially, you know, ICF mentions in this session, because that overall goal could be overarching over like, you know, full engagement. But what do you, can you bring today? to ensure what is that what are the obstacles here to achieve that goal and this is where the magic happens then what is the next right thing like carving our more statue you know carving more stone taking our more stone out of it bringing the statue in life this is where i was linking it to frozen the, the song what is the the only thing i can do is the next right thing so this is where we need to find out help the client support the client and the coachee to find out the next right thing they got to do to accomplish their goal in this session and this this is where the play is that the impact happens as well Same techniques, I would say. Same techniques. That's why I put it like this here, saying, again, these are just my explorations. Explorations. These are, these are just my observations. I may be wrong, you know. You should never listen to a speaker. You should explore everything yourself. That is my motto now. So whatever I say, it may be totally wrong for you, totally right for you, whatever, but you all need to explore it for yourself. 
you know what is the next right thing for you to do that so to yeah to summarize go back i'm going back to that identify the client's destination defining success uncovering the why and what is the next right thing they can do so this actually ends my uh, my exploration with you all any any questions you have we can discuss it together anything we want to explore together as a group regarding establishing and maintaining agreements I would like you to invite any one of you would like to say anything. Hi Rohit, sorry, I just uh, hi, Neha. hi, sorry, it's I fine. Uh, I, uh, I thought that it's one two. I don't know. Somehow uh, got confused with the timing. Uh, I wanted to, of course, I would go through the video once again of how, what you've explained, and this competency, uh, you know, is is always been a challenge for me in terms of you know. Uh, because this is the starting point, the stepping stone of, you know, uh, when we start the coaching conversation. So I would, maybe you would have covered it, but I would like to know from you that at times what happens is that when we ask the client that, how would you measure the success of the conversation? Okay. And sometimes the coachee will keep looking at you, uh, you know, uh, with, you know, and they would they would want you to you to give an answer, or they will say that I don't know how will I measure, yeah. right? And uh, when it is very very important to understand why and uncover, you know, all these three things which you've just said, I think that has rightly summarized uh, the entire conversation around it. But at times, you know, uh, the challenge which I am facing, I get stuck, you know, when I don't get answers. So how to crack that? You know, as a coach, you, you know, you, your, the idea is to get what exactly what the coachee wants and how they can evaluate you as a coach. So what should we do around it? Uh, you know, if you can just help there or maybe anyone. Yeah. I would like to open it to everyone. What are their experiences? So I have faced this challenge every time, Rohit. I think with the coach, when you're coaching a coach, it is much easier. Sometimes I feel because they are anticipating a few things they already know. Yeah. When I coach people within the organization who have no clue about what coaching is, I always get this question, what Neha mentioned. They keep coming back or circling back to the aspect of, Ramya, you tell me what do I need to do here? And most of the times within the organization, especially because we know the demographics of the place, it is related to something that we are already aware of. And hence, maintaining that coach presence becomes a huge challenge. So what I've tried uh, previously is also uh, sometimes get into a little bit of mentoring uh, at times and then again get back to the coach's head uh, or at least give them a push with a challenging question if they are up for it um, which is again sometimes difficult given the fact that they have no experience about coaching and challenging them at times can be difficult depends on the person who how they receive it um, and how they take it forward so these are the two things that I've tried, but most of the time, many of the times I've also been stuck uh, in in those cases. And you have to sometimes remove your men coaching hat and wear your mentoring hat at times to get into that aspect in the real world is what I've seen. Hmm. 
thank you thank you ramya for sharing that neha i would say you know in my experience is is again the agreement with the client what are the expectations of the engagement are they looking for answers or are they actually looking to think themselves you know um, this is the agreement we probably not because the, the this competency is about this session one session but there is another agreement we do anyway with the client before we even start the engagement to say here are the expectations i wouldn't we give you advice but if i have to give you advice i have to come out of coaching and then there be a mentoring contract right so this is what i've used right i have a couple of separate contracts one is the coaching one where the set expectations that i wouldn't be giving any any advice you know so so what i feel this is where the, we were talking about clarity the clarity is important for both parties what are the expectations from this engagement as well this is outside this competency because this competency is basically focusing on this session like that session but you we need to have agreement as well right as engagement what is that engagement agreement this is this is my experience is you know setting up the expectations right at the start what this coaching engagement is about hmm sure thank you rohit i i think that makes a lot of sense to get the expectations right i was also thinking that you know people come to you as a profile you know because yes they think yeah. that you know something they need to yes. so the moment yeah. you know even between the lines you tell them that you know it will be who you who will be deciding on what is the path right path at times i have seen people refraining back mm. uh, you know uh, and uh, i have also uh, you know experienced a ghosting uh, mm. <laughs> you know mm. uh, yeah experience wherein you know people because they are coming to you for something and maybe the expectation maybe you're right uh, we'll have to first pre coaching we'll have to do the discovery call has to be very clear in terms of what are the expectations yeah sure and, i'll try and, yeah and i do believe you know that if you are a subject matter expert you are sme or you are kind of you know in that role as well which you can be get and mentor everyone other person other have two separate contracts right and then be specific during the session so i'm coming out of the coaching session and now i'm i'm coming out of a coaching stance i'm more into mentoring stance right so so this way helps so again i i i my work as a agile coach is about everything like coach mentor teacher you know advisor consultant so i need to be very specific and say okay i'm coming out of this this coaching stance now i'm moving into the more mentoring stance if you because this is what i mentioned when they don't know sometimes they don't know right but then you need to be clear but obviously that wasn't part of this this uh, this uh, this session of this our webinar because our webinar focusing on on the uh, on the meaning i see of competency as a coach but okay. in real life you we sometimes we have to come out of that coaching stance depending on a uh, a role in the company right if you're an internal coach or yeah. as a team coach you know sometimes we have to do that right in my experience yeah you have to advise you have to mentor some sometime if you are a sme you know yeah sure thank you it makes a lot of sense thank you so much again this is just my observation my my experience you know i, I would like you to explore yourself you know keep finding those uh, keep looking for these those answers right and then and then practice it and then find out what happens yeah. thank you okay any any other exploration any other questions or any other exploration i try to do something different today i hope it made sense i may, i wanted to make it more easier rather than going through the competencies the some markers i wanted to link it to uh you know my experience basically you know so hopefully that makes sense okay if there's nothing then thank you very much for your time everyone uh, good to see you all some familiar faces and uh, thank you very much everyone thank, thank you so much thank you thank you Thank you. Bye-bye.
Bye. Bye.